Okay, in the last video we used a regression analysis to find these coefficients, uh, these effects that these macroeconomic variables have on loan charge-offs. Um, so far I've just done lo total loan charge-offs. Same process applies for charge-offs as a percent of total loans. So we've got charge-offs, we've got the macroeconomic variables and the recession variables here. Uh, we're going to now move into the future um, and and look at these macroeconomic scenarios that the Federal Reserve puts out um, to hypothetically shock the economy and see how the bank reacts. So we have an effect, for example, on the unemployment rate. When the unemployment rate goes up, loan charge-offs increase by approximately $70 million. And then these combined effects, when these things change, uh, we can make a prediction on how that's going to affect loan charge-offs. So the Federal Reserve has these, uh, has, has these scenarios out on their website. Um, on our uh, assignment page, it's, it's there. These are the macro scenario tables. So go ahead and download that. Open up this um, this folder here, and then we've got these three domestic markets um, shock scenarios. So baseline, adverse, and severely adverse. These are these are not forecasts; they're just hypothetical scenarios. And so we're going to look. Let's start with baseline. Mm, oh, I've already got it open. Okay. We'll take the baseline uh, scenarios, and, and we can see here. Actually, let's start with let's start with severely adverse, so that we can really see um, what's happening here. So, notice the, the historical data. It's got unemployment rates. Um, I mean, these are real data. Um, this past year or so, five, four, five, four percent. All right. In the severely adverse market scenario, the unemployment rate uh, increases going out across time uh, till 2021. It increases all the way back up to nine nine and a half percent. This is uh, back to sort of Great Recession levels. So a very adverse shock to the economy. Uh, the the GDP starts to, to take a dip. Okay. And so we're going to shock the shock the bank's loan uh, loan portfolio with these macroeconomic variables. So remember, I didn't use all of them when I did the first regression. So I need to get I need to get rid of the ones I didn't use before. Uh, let me let's see here. I used the nominal variables. I didn't use these. And yeah, okay, those are the ones I used. Uh, and we're just going to stack these on top of uh, what we have already. Let me actually, as you can see, this um, this starts with quarter uh, 4, 2017. I actually want to make it end with that. So let me just insert a new column here, like I did before, and turn this data around. Control Shift L to get a filter, or filter it, uh, and then go largest to smallest. So that now 1990 is on the top, 2017 quarter four is on the bottom, and what I can just do here is take this, put it here. Um, that date matches up. I need to move these variables over. Um, now they're all matched. Right, uh, so we can get rid of this and bring that down, and then and then what we're left with are these forward-looking economic variables. We're going to be predicting charge-offs based on these. Also, uh, obviously, this is not the Great Recession or the 2001 recession, so those are zeros going forward. 
Um, and then we have effects that we estimated in our model. That's what these coefficients are. We have those effects. We can apply them as a linear equation, multiplying each effect by each macroeconomic variable uh, to ultimately get a prediction for what might the charge-offs be if this was the case. Okay, so to do that, what I want to do is uh, grab this row, uh, this column, all right, and copy it. I'm going to bring it up here. Right, I need to move KeyBank over. And I'm going to start it here. And, well, now I need to recopy it. Copy. And I'm going to paste it, but I'm going to tran transpose that data. So that here's our intercept. All right, the minus 836. The nominal GDP is 154. Okay, nominal GDP growth. So each of these are lining up um, with their effects that we found. And then we just build an equation. So uh, we have loan charge-offs. It's, it's very similar to, let me uh, go back, come back to what we looked at here. So charge-offs are equal to the intercept plus the effect times the variable plus the next effect times the next variable, and so on and so forth. So we're going to do that uh, here. So we'll take the intercept, and that's not going to change. Um, so actually what I want to do is put some dollar signs here. That's going to keep the variable constant. Um, if we do that, for example, and drag it down, it stays, it stays the same. If we didn't do that, and didn't put the dollar signs, and we drag it down, it's going to start bringing the other data. So we need the dollar signs there. Uh, we're going to take that, put in the dollar signs. So the, the intercept doesn't change. But then now we start to multiply. So nominal um, GDP growth times the effect of nominal GDP growth on charge-offs. Uh, this is like the, the beta in our regression equation. All right, also, we don't want to move below row number two, so I'm going to put a dollar sign before the two so that the row two is fixed, but the column E is not fixed. Uh, yeah, I think that's the way I want it. All right, and then we just have to keep going. So now we get the effect of, um, well, actually, yeah, it doesn't matter. I think we can just keep, we can keep all of these fixed. All right, so then we have nominal GDP growth. Now, nominal income growth times income plus the effect of unemployment fixed times unemployment and we'll just go through here uh, and and do this for everything so let me just do that real quick hopefully I don't mess up and by the way that's not a plus, that's a times. Um, if you put the dollar signs on there all at once, you can use the F4 key. All right. Almost there. Oops. Right. Times 
that. Two more. Although those are going to be zero anyways, so. We don't really need those, but whatever. Okay, now. Double check your work. Um, so the beginning of all these and the way I did it should have a dollar signs so that they're not changing. Mm, that one is off. Uh, oh. We have n2 times, no, 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 that's okay. We get times that, and then plus this dollar sign. Okay, there. Double check your work. All right, and then if we drag this down, we'll also be able to double check that it worked. So this should be all of these variables, and we can see that they're highlighted times these initial variables. So there we go. So we're good. Uh, oh, yeah. And these are high. Um, these charge-offs are high. But that is what we expect if we have a severely adverse uh, market shock. So, so no worries about that. So we're normally around... Uh, 150, 60, um, but in this severely adverse market shock scenario, uh, that's the point is to see how high these loan losses might get if this were to happen. So, so that's what we have going on here. Um, got negative GDP growth, increasing unemployment, uh, inflation staying about the same, interest rates. Um, these are pretty controllable, um, but then the stock market is is falling and so on and so forth. So here we have these. These are estimated severely adverse effects. All right, these are the the well, actually, yeah. Well, okay. I think that's uh, that's okay. It looks like it takes um, a quarter or so before it actually kicks in. All right, but um, all right. So there we go. So this one that that's predicted as well. I'm really curious why that's so low. But uh, I mean, it looks like everything's proper. Okay, well, uh, let's see then what what it looks like here. So then what we can do is we can take our uh, loans, we can graph them um, like we did before and see uh, what happens there as we go forward and, and get a, a large market shock. So that's bringing us back up to a very high charge off levels, close to what we had back in uh, the, the Great Recession, or at least starting to get there. So what you'll do is you'll do that three times with the, in this case, um, severely adverse. But then there's also the adverse and the baseline scenarios. And what you can do is you could put all of those into the same graph. Mm, where did our graph get off to? Well, okay, you can put those all in the same graph and it'll look something like what we see here. Where you've got the same graph with multiple lines going off in adverse, severely adverse, and then also the baseline. Okay, so that, that should give you a start. Um, if it would be useful, uh, let me know and I can, I can add another video on here about making the making the graphs, making the charts. Um, uh, but then this gives you basically the technical foundation for what you need. Um, 
And then the rest is, you know, presentation and analysis of what's going on. Definitely let me know if you have questions about it. Um, uh, then ultimately make some nice, some nice charts. I don't know what happened to the last chart, um, but make some nice charts, um, and then write up, write up an analysis. Look and see, you know, which variables are contributing uh, most to to these charge-offs. So it looks like the mortgage rate uh, has a pretty significant effect. The unemployment rate has a pretty significant effect. The Dow Jones stock market um, changes in that. Um, uh, they have varying effects. So to interpret these again, remember if you increase the mortgage rate by one, then that, and in this case, one um, would be 1%. You increase the mortgage rate by 1%. That's saying here that that's related to or associated with, um, not necessarily causing, but associated with a uh, 20, $27 million increase in charge offs. Okay, unemployment rate. You increase the unemployment rate by one, you increase charge off by about 70 million. So that's how you that's how you interpret these. So think about what are the effects, um, and then you shock the bank and look at how those shocks affect their charge offs. Okay, I'm gonna leave it here. I'm gonna try to find out why this is so low. This one, um, but let's not worry about that. I'm gonna leave it here for you guys. Um, again, let me know if you have questions and, uh, and, uh, I'll see you soon.